Hello, everybody, and welcome back to FOD Shorts. This is the podcast heard on freedomondeck.com and reactionarytimes.com. We are an FM terrestrial radio show heard on 94.9 News Now and stimulating talk out of New London, Connecticut, also heard in Rhode Island and Eastern Long Island. I'm Chet Martin, joined as always by the redneck Brian Bro. Oh, What's yeah, up, baby. How's and it going? I'm good, I'm good, and of course, the one and only C.V. Burt, the hey. fearless one. Hey, if you ever need uh, any kneecaps broken, you know who to call. Freedom on deck. Figuratively <laughs> speaking, of course. Well, listen, listen, guys. It's been a um, kind of a disastrous week for the country. We've got all this nonsense going on with Bob Mueller and what he's been able to accomplish in this witch hunt. I don't really want to talk about that very much. I'll give it a little bit of acknowledgement in the beginning because I think there are more important topics to talk about right now. It's no offense to the discussion. The discussion needs to be had, but we'll have that discussion at another time. What I want to talk about starting off is Molly Tibbetts, who was murdered by an illegal alien scumbag out in Brooklyn, Iowa. And what had happened was 20-year-old Molly was jogging on July 18th, and she went missing in Brooklyn, Iowa. The issue is that the Democrats are screaming and they're up in arms because we dare call this guy an illegal immigrant. Now, I, I, I don't know where their thinking is, but I think it's kind of important to discuss the fact that somebody is here illegally and committing acts of violence and killing Americans. I don't see what the big deal is, but I understand it's because they want the votes. Yeah. It's gotten to such a fever pitch in this country over this issue and with her being the new face alongside with Kate Steinle, that Elizabeth Warren went on television and said herself that she understands how the parents feel, but she should they should also look at the fact that children are being separated on the border. Now, I'm going to go to you, Brian. How can a fraud like Pocahontas Warren say something like that when Molly was ripped out of their arms forever? Because she's a scumbag, and you know you gotta you gotta look at it this way. You know, like the audacity of this individual to commit such a heinous act in this country when he already broke the laws to come into this country says, I mean, says everything you need to know about this individual and why it's so important to secure our country and our borders. The thing that disgusts me about it is what relevance does it have on some sort of semantic uh, you know, term to describe somebody that is here unlawfully? You're an right. illegal alien. You're an illegal immigrant. You are not here legally. What they should just call you it, it, you know, it, 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 it is, is a rogue person in this country. How about that? You're, you're not here legally. You know, you're, you're, you're breaking our laws. And then on top of it, you commit this murder and you want some sort of, uh, of you know, of uh, concession so that the government can't call you an illegal alien? I saw you that. Know, go you, you, go you, blow yeah. it out of your ass. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> no, no. that's... That's how I look at it. Now, CV, I saw on Facebook an individual who is a liberal. He's an acquaintance of mine, and he really offended me. What he said was, leave it to Donald Trump's race-baiting, race-based followers to be, in, to be gleeful that this individual is an immigrant. And first of all, I corrected him very fastly, and I said, Excuse me, illegal immigrant. You, you yeah. seem to forget about the illegal part. But, you know, they're playing identity politics with this girl's life. Right, CV? 
Yeah, and they just uh, deported a Nazi back to Germany recently, and uh, he's as white as the driven snow. But uh, it doesn't matter what color or race he is. The fact is, he doesn't belong here, and if he wasn't here, Mali would still be alive. And that's why when the wall is built, it should be called Mali's Wall. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. I'll say Kate and Molly's Wall. You know, yeah. You know, I was reading this, guys. Over the last year, do you know the number of Americans that have died uh, due to illegal immigrants? How many? Take a wild guess. Brian, take a wild guess, Brian. I'm going to have to say it's got to be between thirty and 50,000. It's not that much. Uh, it's TV. I was going to say higher, so... <laughs> Okay, well, it, it, it's 5,000, according to Reuters, okay? Um, it, you're probably right. It probably is a lot more. I said you could, you could probably triple that. And listen, I, I and that's, think... And that's the cases, hold on. That's the cases that they know that it was an illegal, that they caught. How about the hit and runs? How about right. the DWIs? How about the guy that, mm -hmm. I mean, now that ended up being something different, but there was a gentleman that was uh, delivering to a local stone uh, company out here on the east end of Long Island and was at, at like 2 o'clock in the morning or whatever it was and was hit and killed in the middle of a, a pretty big uh, road, County Road 39, which is which is a large road. It's two lanes both ways with a with a turning on, lane in, in on the Long middle. Island. On Long, on Long Island, Island. And, yep. you know, and, and and he was killed. Now, that very that very easily could have been an illegal immigrant, and they never would have caught him. And think about this. Th those numbers reflect on American citizens being killed by illegal immigrants. But what about legal immigrants that are killed by illegal immigrants? You know, because it does happen. It happens in Brentwood, Long Island, where most of the community that the MS-13 are killing our fellow Latinos. We know that to be true. And, and some of them are, are, are black Americans as well. But we know it to be true that the MS-13 greatly is a scourge in these, these uh, I don't want to say lower class communities, but these communities of um, diverse people, these communities of, of um, well, the immigrant community too. You know, these are the people getting murdered by the MS-13 street gang. So I think you guys are right. I think the numbers are a lot higher. And these two faces of Kate Steinle and Molly Tibbetts should just be one of the examples. We should also look to everything else that's going on in this country right now due to this scourge. Don't you think? Can I, can I make a quick point? Sure. It might be a little hard to articulate, but... Um, those who come here illegally are not the same quality of people who come here legally. The people who come here legally have nothing to fear, nothing to hide, want to do everything above board, want to work hard, and blah, blah, blah. So those are better quality people. Those are the people that are not going to commit so many crimes. But the people who come here illegally couldn't make it in their own country. They couldn't make it. So they, they, they are the, the bottom of the barrel. And, and the better quality people wouldn't want to come here in the first place because they, even in spite of a bad economy and a bad government and the drug cartel and all that, they probably still were able to make it in Mexico without having to leave I, their country. So the people who come over here are already immediately dirtbags. The ones who come here illegally are already dirtbags from, 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 the, from the outset. Brian I, yeah, think I, have, a, I, Brian, I think it's a good point he makes. I mean, don't we want those that want to come here in order to establish a business or in order to work hard and, and become Americans and speak the language and learn, learn the tools in what it takes to be American? Well, I think, I think that CV is hitting the nail on the head. You know, and you got to think of it this way. You know, uh, respectful people tend to be moral people, people that have respect for others, their community, their environment, their town, their state, their country, wherever they come from, you know, they tend to be moral uh, people and have a, have a good moral compass. And, you know, and those people, you know, when, when they're coming here legally, they automatically value our uh, our, our government, they value our system and laws, and they respect them. 
by coming here the right way and doing it legally. Right. Because they, they because they love this country before they ever walk in. Yeah. Because they respect it before they ever walk in. People that come here illegally, they're breaking our laws and when you come into this country illegally, you are disrespecting our government and our way of life and the people here. Yeah, and many have so, said... I mean, it's inherently uh, true what you said. Many have said, I, I think Donald Trump is one of them, that the Mexican government literally releases prisoners, not into their own society, but releases them on the understanding that they will leave the country and go to America, go to the United oh, States. Yeah, that, that's true. It, that does happen, and even Mexico will bus... Uh, people in from Honduras and, and uh, Ecuador and other areas that are criminals and send them into our country. Yeah. We need to get a hold of that stuff. That happens far too much. You know, the, the thing is, what really ticks me off about this guy, this Christian um, Rivera, he was in Iowa for six years working on this farm previously had been dating somebody that knew um, Molly, but he was working on this farm for six years illegally and then goes out and kills this young woman. Now, for these employers, these people that employ illegal immigrants, knowingly doing it, knowing that their social security is not their social security number, knowing that they are basically screwing us, I, I think these people need to be rounded up, the ones that, that employ these folks, and they need to be they need to serve some kind of punishment, don't they, Brian? They have to. They here's you're never gonna stop it if you if you leave the gravy train unchecked, so to speak. You know why why are now I understand that our farmers and and such have it hard in this country, you know, and, you know, to make a living and to earn a wage and to pay employees and to, you know, and to, to make the ends meet, so to speak. Yeah. But the reason that they're hiring these illegals is because they know they're illegal. Cheap they labor. pay them, they pay them off the books. They're not paying them the $10 an hour in New York state minimum wage or $7 an hour in another state or whatever it is. They're paying them under the minimum wage for their state, and they're getting them at, you know, they're getting premium labor at a at a premium price, or I mean, at a, at a, at a cheap price. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's how they try to get ahead. But when you knowingly hire somebody that's illegal in this country, and that person commits a crime, you're culpable. You're culpable. You're acting Absolutely. in conjunction. You're acting in conjunction with that crime. And that's why many of the rhinos and globalists in the GOP don't do anything about illegal immigration because they want the cheap labor for their big globalist corporations. That's the biggest reason they do it, right? Yeah, I think so. I wanted to talk about what's going on in South Africa a little bit with you guys. You know, Michael Savage over this past week has been talking about the genocide that's been happening to the white South Africans mm -hmm. and their farmers, and they've been getting rounded up. A lot of them have been getting killed. Um, there was actually a documentary put out. I can't think of the I can't think of the girl's name. CV. I think you know her name. Which one? Um, oh, Lauren, Lauren, Lauren Southern. Yeah, Lauren Southern. Okay. And she was also she was also banned from uh, the UK, like Savage was. Right, right. So she puts this documentary out where she actually went there and saw the victims and saw the families of the victims that have been getting raped, uh, five-year-old girls being shot in the head, um, you name it, all the atrocities that are happening there. And Savage had the idea to put up basically a petition asking President Trump to uh, put the South African white farmers in the front of the line as far as getting visas because obviously they're Christian, they want to work, they'd be great for our country. Um, Tucker Carlson also went with it, which which upset Savage a little bit, but he <laughs> went with it, and it, it and anyway, it got attention from President Trump. So President Trump tweeted out, we have to do something about what's going on in South Africa, 
with the ACN, which is the wonderful uh, dictatorship that Nelson Mandela started. Don't get me started on him. And right now, over the past, uh, since Nelson Mandela has, has taken control over there, it's been 70,000 uh, whites that have been murdered, even more now. That's, wow. Those numbers I gave you are from 2015. Wow. Trump puts this tweet out, and immediately Sharpton goes on MSNBC, and he says, Donald Trump is putting out Nazi propaganda that has no base in truth. Yeah. And he is doing it with the aid of David Duke. Nothing that the man said has any iota of truth to it. Al Sharpton goes out there once again, stirring the pot, saying that there is no white genocide <clears throat> in South Africa, which is a total lie. And I was looking through the Internet today. I looked at Slate, uh, the New York Times, and they're all acting like this isn't happening. For God's sakes, it is happening. And we're well, looking at what the greatest genocide of our time. And if people aren't going to look at it, guys, we're going to be looking like the, the Germans that looked away when Adolf Hitler was killing all the Jews and, uh, and, and putting them in Auschwitz. And I, I'll stand by that. Um, I'm going to go to you first, CV. What do you think about this situation, especially when some uh, uh, racist antagonist like Al Sharpton gets involved? Well, the left in general are complete, total hypocrites. When there was a genocide against Christians of every color in the Middle East, they turned a blind eye because Obama was feeding it. He was feeding into it with our weapons. And then here, here it is again. Obama goes to South Africa, gins, right. gins up racial hatred, and, uh, and, and, and the murders increase. And the genocide increases. And he doesn't say a damn thing. CNN doesn't say it. None of the left stream media says anything about it. And they, they are trying to kill us. They, they wouldn't mind if they killed you, Chet, and me, and Brian, and every other patriot in this country. If they, can do, if they can get away with it. They'd take our yep. guns first. And then they'd find some lame excuse why we have to be put in jail. Brian, this is a real genocide going on over there. What the hell do we do about this? I don't know what we can do about it. You know, from a country standpoint, you know, I'm not quite sure. But I, I can tell you this, is that, you know, I'm surprised, and don't get me started on the U.N., but, I mean, that's what they're supposed to be there for. They're, you know, the U.N.'s not talking about it. The, 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 the you know, Thank global you. community is not talking about it. And you're going, like, come on, you know. Uh, it, obviously, this is happening. It is being reported. Um, and... You know, these farmers are having their land ripped from them. The families are being killed, like you were saying. Um, something needs to be done. And, uh, you know, hey, wh does President Trump have the ability to put sanctions in against South Africa? Possibly. Well, I, you think, know, I think him tweeting this um, is the great thing. And the worst part about it is the backlash that he's received about that, right? Well, you know, it, it, it really shows their true colors when it, it really shows their true colors when, you know, the, uh, you know, when the left comes out in this way, because it, it shows they don't have tolerance. They don't have compassion. It's all bogus. And it, all they really care about is any way that they can make this man look bad and yeah. to delegitimize his agenda. That's right. And and CV, for Sharpton to come out and say it's neo-Nazism and propaganda, Nazi propaganda, I think it's the left that are behaving like the Nazis. Call me crazy. Well, Sharpton shows no respect at all. He can't even spell respect. So forget <laughs> that. <laughs> That's true. ABD, easy as one, two, six. <laughs> But he, he's the biggest racist of them all. I mean, what about that Tawana Brawley, whatever that was called, where uh, they covered her in feces and said she was raped and got all these cops in major legal trouble. They bankrupted them with all the legal fees, and then it comes out, uh, they made up the whole thing. I always wanted to ask, where did they get that feces from? Sure. Did, did, did Al drop one on her? No, he, mean, he threw it like a, I don't want to say that. 
<laughs> I don't yeah. want to say that. I know what you were going to yeah. say. Because that's another... Un- Be careful. <laughs> that's another unwritten law. It's not really a law, but it's like, uh, it's enforceable. You will be blacklisted for life. All right, well, moving on from that, and real quick, because we don't have much time left. Um, what do you guys think about Trump tweeting out that Jeff Sessions needs to do his job a little better, and he's covering his eyes, and then Sessions actually finding a pair and going back after Trump. It looks oh. like this guy, after the midterms, is going to get the shit can, doesn't it? Uh, or he oh, should yeah. resign. I would like he's gonna, to know, He's going to lose his position, definitely. I, You know, you, you, you had um, uh, Lindsey Graham came out you know, and, and spoke about it and said, you know, that he thinks that Sessions needs to go. And that's, I mean, come on. If there's, if there's any member of the Rhinos, I mean, it's Lindsey Graham. You know, and for, him, and, and for him to come out and say that Sessions needs to go, he needs to go. I mean, it, it, it's apparent in the, in the party that Sessions is just not. You know, how many years did the Republicans beat the drum that Hillary Clinton in the State Department and Fusion GPS, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Fusion GPS and the whole uh, uh, uranium deal. They beat that for years. They finally get someone in office that can do something about it, that can appoint somebody to do something about it, and nothing happens. Why? Why? Why is this man dragging his feet? You know, we all joke around about, you know, that, that the Democrats must have the pictures of the of Jeff Sessions on the farm. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, but, I mean, but, but seriously, I mean, there's, why would you have somebody who, who posts themselves as a, such a devout conservative not, you know, taking every opportunity to, to put Hillary's feet to the fire or Barack's they, feet to the fire? They got a hold of him. I'll tell you guys why. They got a hold of him. And, you know, he put out a statement saying that he will not turn the DOJ into something that's basically, basically what he said is, the DOJ won't have political leanings. It won't be weaponized by a certain party. Is he kidding me? Does he not understand that the DOJ was weaponized freaking uh, 10 years ago by years? Barack Obama? I know. You know? It's the exact opposite of the truth of what he just said. He's not even, he, he's not standing up to the fact that this is what's going on. Is the deep state, I know people say, oh, the deep state, deep state, you're, your tinfoil hat wearing, blah, blah, blah. But it's a monster. It's an octopus. It's a bureaucratic so- sure. socialist monster. And everybody's afraid of it. Because guess what? It, it has its tentacles in everybody's laundry basket. And it knows everything about everybody. So even if you, even if you think you did something wrong, and you have no idea whether the NSA knows about it or not, or any other agency... You're still going to be afraid of them because you're like, I don't want that exposed. Are you guys, I'm going to ask, I'm going to go to CV first. Before we go, because I have to bring it up, are you worried about David Pecker from the national owner of the National Enquirer getting granted immunity and also one of Trump's former financial advisors? How much does that worry? Do you think these guys are going to make up some bogus bullshit and run with it? And um, what do you think is going to happen there? Well... Do you want me to answer? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think I don't think there's anything there, so I don't think there's anything to worry about. So even if he oh. makes even if he makes up bullshit, you still got to prove it. That's true. What about you, Brian? What do you think of all this? Uh, well, listen, they're trying to get to anybody and everybody that they can to possibly make it. They're going to throw everything they can at Donald Trump to try to make it stick. I mean, you know, and you know, hey, he's Teflon Don, you know. And he, he, he's 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 beat them down on everything. Yeah. So well, far, you know. So, so I mean, would I be? Am, am I concerned? Yes. Am I am I worried? I don't know. Let 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 it let it play out and see. You know. But I mean, you know, they're uh, they're giving them immunity. Does it? You know, it definitely you know, makes the old rabbit ears go up. <laughs> you, know, you know, one thing I was like, uh, you know, I wouldn't be shocked, and I was thinking of this myself, I wouldn't be shocked if CNN came across the airwaves and said, 
they're giving immunity to Donald Trump's shoe shiner from Manhattan uh, from 1988. You know, it's like they'll go anywhere to get anything they can. And this is really turning into a witch hunt. That's why I didn't really want to touch it tonight. But guys, listen, next week we're going to be back on 94.9 News Now and Stimulating Talk on the FM dial. Most people out there listening to the podcast know about our radio show, so you know where to go check it out. We're going to have Xander Gibb on, and we're going to also have the lovely Miss Andrea Kay on with us. And then the following week is our three-year anniversary. And, of course, we're going to have the one and only Voice of Freedom, Lee Elsie, with us on that show. And then we have a really huge guest, Brigitte Gabriel, coming on the program with Freedom on Deck. Another uh, another knockout guest for us. We'll slam it out of the park. Everybody have an awesome night. And my brothers in solidarity, just keep up the positive vibes for the MAGA movement. Good day. <laughs>